Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there is a span AB. Also, there is an overhanging span BC. In the span AB, there is a point load 50 kN acting on the center. In the overhanging span BC, there is a uniformly distributed load 20 kN per meter. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the point B, there is a hinged support. Span AB is 4 meter long. The overhanging span BC is 3 meter long. In this analysis, we have to find 3 moments. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be a moment. Here, the moment is MAB. In the joints, there will be 2 moments. In the joint B, there are 2 moments. MBA and MBC. So totally we have to find 3 moments. Also we have to find 2 vertical reactions RA and RB. In the joint B we can easily calculate both of the moments. To calculate MBC we have to calculate moment in the point B from the point C. For the overhanging span, there is UDL 20 kN per meter. The distance of overhanging is 3 meter. Now let's calculate the moment in the point B from the point C. For that, we have to multiply this UDL with the distance and a distance by 2. When we do that, we are getting 90. We know that in the case of a UDL, we have to multiply the load with the distance and a distance by 2 to get the moment. Since MBC is acting in the anticlockwise direction, we have to add a negative sign with the load. So we are getting a negative value. MBA and MBC will be having the same value, but MBA will be positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction, MBC will be negative because it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Since both of them having the same values, we can write MBA is equal to 90 kN meter, but MBA is positive because it is acting in the clockwise direction. Now we are going to find the fixed end moments. No need to make the fixed end moments in the overhanging span. Only make the fixed end moments in the span AB. In the span AB, there is a point load 50 kN acting on the center. The formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. W is 50, L is 4. When we apply the values, we are getting MFAB and MFBA. In the stiffness matrix method, we have to check the number of supports in which slope can occur. Let us see the conditions. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. In the hinged support, there will be slope. In the roller support also, there will be slope. In this beam, in the point B, there is a hinged support. So the number of supports where slope occurs is 1. In the point B, there is a theta B. Now let us make the fully restrained structure. In the fully restrained structure, there will be no slope. We know that only in the fixed support, there will be no slope. So let us remove the hinged support from the point B and replace with the fixed support. In the restrained structure, no need to consider the overhanging span. We have made the fully restrained structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. 
In this analysis, there is only one coordinate that is in the point B because in the point B we have the unknown displacement that is the slope. The coordinate should be made in the clockwise direction. We know the formula to calculate the slope value. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. In this formula, first let us calculate the PL matrix. We know that PL matrix is the moments developed in the coordinates due to the given load. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate that is in the point B. In the point B, we have calculated a fixed end moment that is M of BA. Let us apply that. Inside the P matrix and PL matrix, we will have only one value because in this analysis, there is only one coordinate. In this formula, now let us calculate the P matrix. P matrix is the final forces or moments acting in the coordinate direction. In the point B, we have already calculated two final moments, MBA and MBC, but we may be confused which moment we have to select for P matrix. We should not select MBC because it is acting in the overhanging span. MBA is acting in the span BA. So for the P matrix, we have to select MBA, which is equal to 90. In this formula, now we are going to calculate the stiffness matrix. Now let us see how to calculate the stiffness values inside the stiffness matrix. For that, we have to apply unity displacement in every coordinate. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate that is in the point B. So we have to apply unit displacement in the point B. Then we have to apply the formulas. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. If the fair end is hinged, the formula is 2EA upon L. We have to be very careful. We have to apply the unit displacement in the fully restrained structure and not in the given beam. Now let us see the size of the stiffness matrix. For three coordinates it will be 3 by 3. For two coordinates it will be 2 by 2. For one coordinate it will be 1 by 1. In this analysis there is only one coordinate. So for one coordinate the size will be 1 by 1. Inside the matrix, there will be only one value. Now, let us calculate the value of K. For that, we have to apply unit displacement in the coordinate. In the point B, there is a fixed support. But when we apply the unit displacement, it is no longer a fixed support. It becomes a hinged support. Now, let us see how to draw this curve. We are applying unit displacement in the point B. So from the point B, we have to make a clockwise curve towards the point A. And we have to see the direction of the arrow. This arrow indicates upwards. So the curve comes above the span. We must give some gap between the fixed support and the curve. You can see that I have given some gap here because in the fixed support there will be no slope. The coordinate should be placed in the same clockwise direction. Now let us calculate K. For that from the point B we have to look on both the sides. On the right side there is nothing. On the left side there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of BA is 4 meter. Let us apply that. Finally, for K, we are getting EI. In this formula, we have calculated everything. Let us apply the values. EI inverse is 1 upon EI. Then we have to add these two matrices. 
after adding we are getting 65 we know that in this problem the system displacement is the slope that is in the point b which we finally got that is 65 upon ei now let us make the slope deflection equation for mab and find it no need to make the slope deflection equation for MBA because we have already calculated it. Here let us apply the fixed end moment which we have already calculated. Length of AB is 4 meter, let us apply that. In the point A there is a fixed support. In the fixed support there will be no slope. So theta A will be 0. After applying the value of theta B, we are getting MAB which is equal to 7.5 kN meter. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. For MAB, we got a positive value that means it is acting in the clockwise direction. We assumed that MAB would be acting in the anticlockwise direction but our assumption is wrong. MAB is acting in the clockwise direction. Now let us calculate the reactions. Let us take the whole beam together and calculate the vertical reactions. When we take the whole beam together, we do not have to consider MBA and MBC because they will get eliminated. So we have to only consider MAB which is acting in the clockwise direction. First, I am going to calculate RA. For that, I am going to take moment about B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4. So 4 RA. The point load 50 kN is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative and the distance is 2, so minus 50 into 2. This UDL is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. This movement is acting in the clockwise direction, so it is positive. Finally, we are getting Ra, which is equal to 0.625 kN. Now, to calculate Rb, let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. Ra and Rb are acting upwards, so both of them will be positive. The point load 50 kN and UDL 20 kN per meter are acting downwards. So both of them will be negative. We have already calculated RA. Let us apply that. Finally we are getting RB. Now we are going to draw the shear force diagram. Before drawing the diagram, let us calculate the shear force values. I am going to start from the point A and move towards the point C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using that, we can calculate the shear force values. Using the values, we can make the shear force diagram. Now let's make the free movement diagram. We have to make the free movement diagram only in the span AB. No need to make the diagram in the overhanging span BC. For making the free movement diagram, we have to consider the span AB as a simply supported beam and calculate the movement. In the span AB, there is a point load 50 kN acting on the center. The formula to calculate the maximum movement is WL upon 4. Using the formula, we are getting 50 kN meter. Using the value, we can make this diagram. 
Now let us see how to make the end moment diagram. We have to use these end moments and draw the end moment diagram. For MAB, we got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MBA, we got a positive value. So it is also acting in the clockwise direction. For MBC, we got a negative value. So it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now we have to see the direction of the arrows. This arrow indicates downwards. So we have to mark this 7.5 below this line. Both of these arrows indicates upwards. So we have to mark the point above the line. If the end moment diagram comes above this line, that will be negative. If it comes below the line, that will be positive. Now we can combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram so that we are getting the bending moment diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.